question. You don't have to ask a question, just ask a question. You know, you can just go home without saying anything. I, I could do that. Somebody, just somebody want to keep it easy. <laughs> Don't put no pressure on your stuff to ask that if you don't feel like it. What would you like from Zubak in his first game back? Not a lot. You know, no, I'm just <laughs> Nah, just uh, his presence on the floor, like I said, just talking to him, you know, during the timeouts, he said the game was fast, you know, he hadn't played in a while, and just his timing and rhythm, but just having another big bite on the floor was good for us, and um, we're just going to slowly, you know, get him integrated and um, hopefully continue to start feeling better and better and he can catch his rhythm. Do you envision any scenarios where, in a game's time, him, Tice, and Mason will all play in the same game? Not unless we play Cleveland again like we did last year. We played three centers. Uh, we played Zoo, uh, Moses, Moses, and and Musa. Yeah, we did that in Cleveland, but we're short bodies. So uh, if we're not short bodies, I don't see that happening in the future. <laughs> you uh, had another double-digit deficit to start this game. Uh, well, what, what allowed you to kind of get back into it uh, after being down 16 to 5 to start? Yeah, just, you know, I mean, we, we had some good looks, I thought, but we just had low energy. You know, didn't have a lot of energy. Then our bench, bench came in, you know, with Russ and, and Norm and Amir, Mace, they came in and um, kind of got us going, you know, kind of got us going with some juice. Uh, we needed that. Like I said, long road trip and, you know, the six out of seven games. So, I mean, six game out of seven. So, um, you know, long road trip, didn't have a lot of pop to start our starters, but our bench came in and gave us some good pop and some good minutes, you know, coming off the bench. And uh, I feel like after Friday night, there was a strong emphasis on being better defensively, uh, after, especially after how the previous three games started. Like, you guys are great in Boston, um, and then there was some slippage throughout the week. Uh, how did you hold this Miami team uh, under under 100 points next year and then before? I thought just really addressing it before the game, just talking about you know having that defensive mindset, and, you know not letting our guards down, and trying to get out to a, to a good start defensively. And so I, I credit our guys for for doing that, you know locking in, um, understanding the game plan, you know of how we wanted to play. And they did a good job, you know overall. They did a pretty good job defensively. Mutai, you you alluded to it, how this was the sixth game in ten nights on the trip, and you'd already clinched a winning trip and. Look, you know how the schedule is, yeah. and you know how guys tend to be sometimes. This was a very professional 40. It wasn't pretty, but it was very professional 48 minutes. Just what's that say about the buy-in right now from your guys that they can come on a night where a lot of things don't go right and yeah. still play on the other end the way that they did? Yeah, I mean, just like you said, the buy-in and the mental. Just to, you know, like I said, six games in 10 nights and be on the road for, you know, 12 days. And um, just having that mental... You know, just like we're going to come in, we're going to win no matter what. You know, and PG didn't shoot the ball well, but I thought he was great defensively. And, you know, James, and that's when James comes in and he picked up the scoring and Kawhi picked up the scoring, um, Norm off the bench. But like I said, you know, just having that mindset and that we're going to try to win every game. And um, I give the guys credit, they've been doing that. And we have a lot of talent and we have a lot of. A lot of guys willing to sacrifice to do whatever it takes to win, and um, that's what we did. You know, slow start, like you said, offensively, and you know, Spo does a great job of just switching up defenses and keeps you off balance. Can't really run out, you know, ATOs because you don't know what he's gonna do. You know, zone wise, man, or pick up full court, two one two trap, and so um, I really give our guys credit for just sticking with it, sticking with the game plan, and like I said, just finding a way to win this game. You, Norm had a Norm, Norm had good bets in Toronto. But being around these guys now for as long as he has been, how, how much do you think he has embraced his role? What 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 he brings to this? Yeah, Norm, you know, really embraced his role. You know, and for a guy that works so hard and puts all the time and work in that he does, you know, to have to switch his game, you know, um, when James got here, because you know, last few seasons we've been playing through Norm a lot and pick and rolls and different things and. Now that we acquired James, he's more catch and shoot and more, you know, driving closeouts, playing off of closeouts, which, you know, like he can score at every level and just the work he puts in, just being able to do, you know, what we asked him to do offensively, he's been great. And so his role has changed as far as having the ball in his hands more, but he's getting more shot attempts, more threes, and he's, he's getting more closeout opportunities. See, I wanted to pick up off of uh, Tim's point uh, about, you know, these ATOs, man. Like, you mentioned before the game, like, as the season goes on, you want to develop your team so that they can develop these counters and, and just improve the offense, you know, get more into the offense. How does a game like this help your team, you know, be able to look back and say, when we see this, we can react to it this way. When we see the zone, you know, we can understand where we need to be and 
kind of escape from there? Yeah, um, just keep working. You know, like I said, we don't really run a lot of ATL. We run some stuff, but like, you know, once All-Star break is over, we really started, you know, we really started locking in and um, honing in on running ATLs, execution, second and third options out of, out of timeouts and things like that. Um, but we do have some stuff in yeah, as far as ATOs, but just understanding, you know, two, three zones, you know, um, three, two zones, how we want to attack it, um, which we know. And then it just kind of just slows the game down, makes you stagnant. Um, and we're a great offensive team, so we want to, you know, we want to score at a higher rate. We want to play free and loose. And I thought um, to start the game, you know, I thought Spo really had those guys, you know, locked into it. They were really physical. We didn't own our space. You know, they got into us defensively. And uh, we didn't handle that well to start the game. And as the game went along, we did a better job with that. And that was really the same thing that you saw when the Heat came to LA. Uh, like they had, they, they had the offense in the mud a little bit. But then there was a moment in that first half where it seemed like once y'all understood how y'all needed to play the game, it became a lot easier. Yeah. Is that kind of what you observed today as well? Yeah, for sure. Like, you know, you, you kind of, you tell the guys what's going to happen, what you're going to see, but until you actually see it and feel it, um, it's going to take some time. And so once we saw how they were playing the zone, we was able to do a better job just executing and overloading and doing some different things offensively to try to get um, different triggers. Um, Make them put two on the ball and then swing, swing, and drive and close outs. And you know, our guys did a better job of that after the first quarter. Coach, you mentioned how it kind of keeps you off balance with the different defensive coverages, and we talked about it there with the zone. And, and I'm sure that's something you knew coming into this game, how they're known for that, and they've been doing it as, you know, more as of lately. And kind of after they settled into that zone, they went back into the man in fourth quarter for a little bit. Did you think it was just a matter of executing and kind of hitting more shots towards the end? or? What did you feel about like the, the zone versus man execution? Well, I thought the zone just you know slowed us down. You know, made us stagnant. Uh, we didn't get into our stuff you know quick enough. And um, if you don't get into it quick enough, the shot clock starts running down, and then you know you're playing in butter situations. You know, five or less on the clock and take some tough shots. And so, um, and then once you know once they're a man, then we can pretty much just run our stuff that we normally run, and guys are comfortable doing that. But you know, the zone just kind of slowed us down and made us stagnant. And uh, once we, you know, talked about it at halftime, we're pushing the pace, getting to it quicker. I thought we did a better job with it. Coach, after all the struggles from the Harden trade, now you're one game back uh, from the first seed in the Western Conference. What has been the key for the, for the team's success? Um, understanding the rotations, um, understanding the sacrifice that each guy has to make every night, um, understand who plays well with who, how we want to play, um, each guy's go-to plays. And then just, you know, from there, just being able to execute. And so um, I give our guys credit, like I've always talked about, the players did a good job of just, you know, listening, getting better each day, each shoot around, each practice. And our coaching staff are putting in all the extra work and time just trying to get this right. And so I give everybody credit um, for sticking with it, staying with it, and being able to execute. Thank you. Let's get ready for Hoop Jab.